welcome to the official Dead Dad Club's meeting. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's only us three. <laughs> There's more. In the uh, whole scene? In the whole, yeah. I think everyone else has a dad. No. <laughs> no, there's got to be at least one more. Yeah. Um, Maybe they just didn't want to talk about it. I know dead moms. Oh. And yeah, but mommy issues are not near as fun. I know two comics, dead moms. Dead They're, moms are a little more sad to yeah, me. Who else is dead, dead? Oh, Mo. Abed. Oh. Yeah, just recently. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Sad. Yeah. So that, that okay, I'm going to ask the question that I feel like everybody always wants to ask but doesn't. Uh -huh. um, how and when did your guys' dad die? Mostly how. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, he, he was an alcoholic. I think the official cause of death was like pancreatitis. To be honest, I don't know if I even pronounced that correctly. <laughs> I just say he was an alcoholic, and then people just kind of, like, back off immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 2010, I was 15. Wow. 15 mm -hmm. is a hard age. Same day I got my permit. Same day? Same day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did your dad teach you how to drive? No, because yeah. he was dead. <laughs> well, you get you, you learn how to drive before you get your permit. Not in my family. My oh. family's <clears> – <throat> well – I shouldn't say my family. My mom's a rule follower, so there uh, was no driving pre. So we're Mexican. We learned how to drive at eleven. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. No, not not yeah. not here. So wow, fifteen's rough because you have like a relate. Like my dad died when I was three, mm -hmm. mm. so I feel like, you know, I remember some things, but fifteen, you remember shit. Oh yeah. Mm. What was y'all's relationship like? We were very close, but I was, I think, young enough to not know a lot of what was happening with the alcoholism like I knew but I was like eh, that's just like what happens as I feel like because I was so young and I was like a daddy's girl mm. so we were pretty tight um you know as tight as we could probably be how but, did they tell you uh my mom came home and she was like I have to tell you something and mm. she was crying and I knew that, and my parents were divorced, but I knew that, like, I, I just kind of, like, knew already. Mm. I feel like I had, like, a sense. And he was, like, not doing super well. He'd been kind of, like, MIA for a while, and she was just like, Dad's gone. And I was like, okay. And then she came, then the siblings came in, and then I had to watch her tell Nick and Christian. I have two brothers. She um, told you alone first? Mm-hmm. Why, do you think? I don't know. Interesting. I think she was just, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. My, maybe my mom just like can't keep her mouth shut. Like I, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to. Yeah. I would be like, I need to say this right now. Right. But also I think she knew that I knew and we were just kind of like, what are we going to do? Sit here and like let it build. Wow. At least that's how I remember it. Hmm. Unless I blocked something out. That's wild, man. And you had siblings to go through it. That's mm -hmm. nice. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yes, I want to yeah. slide. Are you only child? No, I have a sister, but uh, she has a different dad. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, it? What? How, how old is she? She's one year older than I am. How? What? Uh, what is? What am I trying to ask? What? It, when did her dad come into? Wait, your dad died at when you were three. When I was three. When you were, and then when did your mom get remarried? Right oh. away then. Uh, no, so my sister was born first, and then my mom went with another guy and had me. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I was yeah. Trying to ask. yeah. So, what about you? How old were you? Uh, it was a year ago in February. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fresh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How did he pass? Uh, alcohol. No way! Oh my yeah. god, that's twins. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Same kind of like for um, how. Al alcoholism and then and then uh he just got sick because of it and then uh just had just his body just stopped working damn yeah yeah it was one thing and then another and his liver and all that jazz were you all close yeah, yeah this is so weird this is my first time like talking about it mm. and there's like all these lights on i thought it'd be like different but uh uh yeah i uh yeah he was it was so uh he uh was my my stepdad 
but him and my mom got together when I was like five. And then like my real dad was like not really there, mm. you know, like I know who he is and I talk to him and actually I haven't talked to my real dad in, um, since last November, a little before Thanksgiving. But, uh, but yeah, like, th- like, <laughs> um, I was really close to him. Yeah, yeah, I was really close to him. He uh, was, like, in a band, and he, like, bought me, like, records and stuff. So, like, I got, in, like, into punk because of him. That's, like, a big part of my life. And uh, he was a tattooer, and, like, tattooing, like, back home is, like, that's what, like, all my friends do and, and stuff. So, like, I grew up around that. Um, yeah, yeah, he was, like, a big, big part of my life. One of my best friends until I was like 16 and him and my mom split up and then he started drinking again. He got clean for most of my life. So like he, him and my mom got together when I was five and like pretty early on in the relationship. Like my mom was like, I, I can't like be with someone that is like, um, is like abusing alcohol. And so he got clean and he was clean, like basically all of my life. And then, uh, and then he had my, younger sister uh when i was 13 we're three years apart or 13 years apart rather uh and then when she was three him and my mom split up Mm. and then he started like drinking again and then he got clean again and then uh and then fell off again and then mostly stayed uh like abusing alcohol was that like a roller coaster of emotions for you or were you pretty much like i'm just gonna kind of uh try to go about my life and not um, yeah, it was like a roller coaster, but it was like, a, like, a like a, like a really long roller coaster, you know, like where it was like, there were like long periods of where it's just like up, 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 up. And then like the down where I'm like, oh, like I miss him. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sad, uh, angry, but there was like long periods where I was just like, okay, you know, Mo- mostly okay. Uh, and that, I don't know if that was like suppression or like. Um, or if I just was okay, <laughs> you yeah. know, like it's hard to think that I was like genuinely okay with it because he was like th- the most important person in my life. Like, uh, like he did all the dad stuff. Like he taught me how to drive, uh, like built, I re- he like bought a bike and built it from like, we built a bicycle together, like art projects, like everything. And then him and my mom split up and maybe because like he was using alcohol and he was like really mean to my mom and like that had never happened in my like i never saw him disrespect anybody he never raised Mm. his voice like nothing like that and so i think like i had experienced that when him and my mom split up that there was like something in me that was like oh i i just like don't care or or or, like don't care about what don't care about him maybe Mm, or like don't care that he's like not in my life or something i don't know i don't know it's uh, your father's dying from alcoholism. Has that affected your relationship to alcohol? Um, I'm pretty. I mean, I don't even think it would be him dying. I think it would be more when he was living an alcoholic mm. and seeing all that growing up. I still drink. I don't really limit that. Um, I make an effort not to drink unless it's socially. Like I don't keep alcohol in my house. I don't drink when I'm alone um, just because I feel like you know, best to like kind of watch that. Um, But honestly, no, I think I'm just very aware, if anything. Like I'm more aware of what could happen. And I also think I'm more hyper aware of other people's drinking. Mm -hmm. Where like I worry more about other people when I see them drinking too much. And I'm like, I'm fine. I know what happens. Like, obviously I know everything that there is to know. So I don't worry about me, but I worry about it when I watch other people drink. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't think about it too much at all. My entire family, they're all um, uh, addicts. Like, that gene just, like, runs heavy in our family. Mm. Uh, But my mom uh, never had that problem. And so, like, it just kind of skipped her. And because of that, and then my dad, I said, like, was mostly sober. Mm -hmm. You know, I I didn't really see it. That's wild. In fact, I... I didn't see it at all, really, (laughs) like, you know, because he split. And then when he was abusing, he was not living with my mom anymore. Mm -hmm. And then when I was a kid, it was like, uh, you know, it was pretty early on. I mean, I I think I remember like one time 
him like having like a six pack of beer like in our kitchen and like that's the only time that I could remember like ever seeing alcohol like with him and then when him and my mom split I I saw him like drinking and and driving unfortunately like you know he'd come into the house and there'd be alcohol that was like open in the car and stuff like that but um yeah we just I never I didn't start drinking until I was like 25 mm okay yeah it just never was like important to me or yeah yeah you're we're all in different <clears throat> like them dying at different stages in our life because three 15 and a year ago how do you feel I, I know you and I have had a lot of fun being like our dads are dead yeah. you know like how do y'all feel humor wise like do you can you find humor in it uh do you like when people ask you about your dad? <laughs> I think I find a lot of humor in it. <clears throat> My favorite thing is when I make jokes about it and people are like, oh, do you use humor to cope? And I'm like, that's no fun. Like, <laughs> yes, obviously that's what's happening. I think there's really like I, I've gone through phases. I think that developed as I got a little bit older. But I also think when you tell people that you have a dead dad, there's like the same reaction. And so if you're like, I'm joking about it, so you don't have to be weird about it. Like, I feel like it's not even really coping with him dying as much as helping other people be comfortable with the fact that he's dead. Because I'm like, I don't want to make this weird. And I have, so my dad was a drummer. Um, Dude, that's so crazy. So is mine. Whoa. Yeah. Do wow. you guys have the same dad? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, mm -hmm. ah, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the one that I like, so Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. I don't know if you know that song. It's very, very popular. It plays at a lot of parties. That's my dad on the drums. And that's so amazing. You just gloss over that, but that's. It is cool. It is very fun. He was like a country music drummer. So when that song plays at parties, I get the fun of instantly bringing the mood down and being like, this is my dead dad. <laughs> yeah. um, do you everybody. Say, do you really say it like I that? I say it just like that. <laughs> Jeez. I say it just like that. I'll be like, hey, did you know this is my dead dad? Do you dance up? Are you like, hey? Yeah. And then people are like, oh, shit, do we turn it off? <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's fine. It's fun. But I think, too, because, like I said, when he died when I was in high school, and I remember going back to high school, like, the day after, and no one spoke to me. Not the day after. That's an exaggeration. But, like, yeah. you know, after the funeral, a few days, whatever. Right. And, like, no one would speak to me because they were like, I don't, want her, I don't want her to cry. I don't want to, like, hurt her feelings. So it was like, no, like, it is what it is. You know, like, I I will get through it, but, like, you tiptoeing around it doesn't help anything, and that's why I feel like I started to develop the humor. Also, it's fun. Yeah, I, I know. It's fun. My dad died in a pretty, like, intense way, mm -hmm. and I kind of, like, I mean, it's been so long that uh, when people ask me, like, oh, when they finally get the courage up to be like, how'd your dad die? I'm, like, I get a little excited because mm -hmm. I'm, like, just you wait. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not great. But it's, like, you get to share, like, I don't know, not sharing is worse than um, talking about it, you know? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't, it's like, I would prefer to talk about it. I'd also prefer to just be asked. Yeah. Like, how do you die? I'm like, happy to tell you, happy to talk about it. <laughs> don't like, just, you know, like I, especially cause people always, you're going to ask somebody. Cause I do that. Like when I find out somebody died, I'm like deep diving on the internet. Like, all right, I need to know what happened. Right. Right. So I feel like I'm like, you're going to ask, you're going to look it up. Just ask me. I'm happy to answer. Yeah. Yeah. People, I mean, we're weird around death. Humans are weird. It's a weird thing. Do you, have you, I mean, it's soon, but have you found humor in it at all? Um, you know, I I had a joke that I, I did like really early on uh, where uh, I go, uh, today my, I used to say it, my uncle, today my uncle turns 10 years sober and everyone claps and I'm like, it's also <laughs> the 10 year anniversary of his death. Like that, you know, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's like such a great joke. It works every time. Mm -hmm. So I always, so I open with it. It's like, oh, it's, like wow. it's like, a, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, I always, always do it. But then, uh, but then, um, my dad, you know, when my dad died, I, I changed it to my dad, mm -hmm. but I also changed it to my dad because I had all this other stuff about my uncles that are like alive. And I, I found myself like constantly um, 
in my set explaining that it's another uncle. And it was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, it was like annoying. It didn't like do anything bad for this, but I just didn't like it. I thought it was like, you know, just writing that didn't need to be in there. So I was like, oh, if I change it to my dad and then I could do this other stuff about my uncles and no one's confused. So I do that. That's the only joke that I have that's like about, but it wasn't like, a joke that was written, but yeah, I don't find any, like, not that I don't think that there's humor. I just like, don't, I can't, I haven't found anything that I'm like, oh, this is what I want to write about. Or I have like story, I, I've, you know, cause I like run the storytelling show here. Yeah. So like, I, I, I like tell stories about him and I know that like, it's because like of him passing that I'm like, oh, this is like something that I, like, I want to like, um, you know, uh, discover and like this is something that I like want to um, incorporate into my stand up but it's like it's really hard like mm -hmm. I, not like it's hard for me emotionally like it's hard like I can't find anything it feels like but I have a couple stories that I've told um, yeah M Mo Mo's dad passed recently and the very next time that I saw Mo like go on stage he had like three or four minutes of like material about it. And wow. It was like, but and it was like, like making fun of his dad being dead. Like, like anything that I do isn't making fun of like, have like, it's not like, oh, I have a dead dad. Yeah. You know, like these are stories and I, and they don't know if my dad's dead or not. Like, you know, the way that I tell them, but Mo just like went in and like, I remember watching being like jealous, <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's hard for me. I've done the roast battles. And like people have asked, is there anything off limits? And um, <laughs> I've said, yeah, like you can't talk about my dad unless it's like um, this is kind of, I guess, sh like shitty to say, unless it's a comic like I like really respect. <laughs> well, yeah, you There's know they're a, gonna do a yeah. good joke. Yeah, they're gonna do a good joke. There's a couple comics that I love, but I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to hear you make a joke about my dad. Like, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. So like that's that's like the only reason if anyone were to ask. And be like, well, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I um I tried to write a joke about like so my mom shot my dad. Whoa. Yeah. And uh she went to jail for it. He was abusive, but she still went to jail. And I tried I have a joke about it. And it's not like fully developed, but I'll ask people like I used to ask people like, what do you think about this joke? And they would just say insane things like, oh, what if you went like your mom was having sex with prisoners? And I'm like, that's really um, not where I'm trying to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. and I don't know. It's a, it's a hard thing to joke about on stage because uh, it's been so long for me that I just like say what happened out loud. Mm -hmm. And people are like, whoa, I need a second to pro what did you just say? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh no, we're past that. Right, that is a statement. Like, <laughs> I mean, I knew, so I'm like, but I feel like maybe at some point when I originally found that out, I was probably like, oh. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would take a second. Unless you're, <laughs> I feel like if you're already in an audience of people with dead dads, mm. like dead dad exclusive comedy shows or something. Ooh, that you're would saying be... it, it takes a second to hear that, like as an audience member? Yeah, I think as yeah, an audience yeah, member sure. to like hear that and process it and be like, Oh, also because if you're not, if it's not something that you're used to, people that have dead dads or use humor as a coping mechanism, or not even a coping mechanism, but are just okay with humor about it. Yes. That I think is really jarring to people. Like my friends have said that to me and they're like, yeah, you used to like make these jokes and I would just like stare at you and I didn't know if I could laugh and it was like really awkward. And I was like... <laughs> But then as my friends, like, know me more, then I, now I make the jokes and they land every time. Oh. And I'm like, phenomenal. See, it only took, like, four years. Phenomenal. Mm. Now you find my dead dad comedy hysterical. <laughs> but yeah, it if you're not used to it, it takes a second. For sure. I get that. Some people w just love making jokes, like, about it. Quaslow's oh, yeah. have tons of jokes about his parents. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this happened a while ago for Quaslow. But, like, even in conversation, he'll bring it up. If someone has, like, a dead dad joke or a dead mom joke, he woos. 
it's like it's he woos the way someone's like anyone drinking tonight and he's like you know it's yeah. the same reaction like hey you know someone will say something about a dead parent and he's like dead 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 <laughs> mom he'll start chanting you know. i kind of love that I, though. Man. oh i i, I yeah. love watching it yeah i love watching it and all and quasi's so funny he is very funny. god his jokes yeah. are so dark because and both so of his parents funny. are dead yeah Ooh, r- really mommy, no that's yeah yeah that's a lot dude yeah <sighs> I would. Good for him. I'm not, I don't want to like do his bits, but like, there's, it, they're just so good. Yeah. yeah. Just pretend they're yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's really funny. Yeah, he's for so sure. he's so so funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah some people I, get very excited about it. It's weird. I've I mentioned dead excited. dad I stuff, and people too. in the audience will like clap. And I'm yeah. Like, sh- sh- yeah, dead dad. <laughs> but I think when you lose like a parent, like you have this like next level of understanding of loss that like a normal person doesn't have. It's not necessarily a good thing, but I feel like whenever I meet somebody who has a dead dad, I'm like, you're just instantly like weirdly trauma bonded because you're like, you've been through something that only so many people have been through. Yes. I don't feel that way with really? anyone really yet. No, not really. I like feel like people think that they get it, but they don't. Hmm. And like, that's probably just like not true. When their dad know? is dead too, you mean? Yeah, like, oh, like when people like say they understand because they have like a dead parent. I'm like, no, it's like hmm. it feels kind of sh- shitty to feel that way because I'm like, well, you do understand more yeah. than anybody. But I just like, yeah. Do you think know. it's because it's still kind of fresh? Um, I think because sometimes it feels like. The way that someone, like, yeah, maybe it probably is because it's, like, fresh, you know? Like, if, like, the way, like, Quaslo is about it, sometimes I'm just, like, oh, it, like, I'm, it's being, like, judgmental. It's, mm-hmm. like, probably, probably people have, have something that I want, you know? And, like, just that they're okay, they're more okay than I am, mm-hmm. you know? And so, like... So, like, when people say that they understand, they probably do. But I'm like, you don't understand because if you did, you wouldn't be so light about it or or whatever, you know. And that's just, like, yeah, because it's fresh, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, time is more healing and, like, I'm probably not as healed. I'm probably more healed than I would have been if I weren't doing comedy, though, too. For sure. You know, because not – I mean, I couldn't imagine people being as uh, humorous (laughs) about it, it, like, outside of, like, this world that we live in. Right. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. So it does help, even though, like, sometimes I, like, try to um, reject it, I think. yeah. Trauma hides, too. Like, I thought I was cool with it. Mm -hmm. And then I went to go teach four-year-olds, which is, like, around the age that I was when my dad passed. And I was like, oh, shit, I was actually very uh, aware. And then it brought all these feelings Mm -hmm. back up of, like, oh, that's why I have abandonment issues. Mm -hmm. It's not just, like, I wasn't born with that. (laughs) Yeah, I think that as I've like grown into adulthood has mm-hmm. been the most alarming of everything is I'm like, I'll do something or I'll have a reaction to something or there'll be an issue with like a relationship that I have. And as I've gotten older and able to process my own grief and what happened and everything, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a direct result of this trauma that I went through as a kid and trying to like work through that and being like, oh, there's a reason that I'm behaving this way. I'm mm-hmm. not actually not as okay as I often think I am because it has been I'm almost 27 so it's been 12 years it feels like I shouldn't still be consistently processing it but it comes and goes but yeah you just like something happens and you're like oh Mm -hmm. that's still very real how do you feel when you're like oh that's connected to my dad's death like I should see a therapist. Yeah. 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 Well, everyone should just see a therapist. Agreed. Yeah. Everyone should see a therapist. It should be manda- like mandatory. Hundred yes. percent. Yeah. It really should. Yeah. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> you were talking about how like it, you feel like it, uh, introduce you to death in a way. Um, do you like? So I just have my mom right now. Mm-hmm. Do you guys get like? hyper focus on like your mom passing now at all um i think about my mom yeah probably more but i have thought i think about my mom all the time Mm -hmm. i just always worry about her yeah so i don't know if it's more it's different you know the way that i think about her 
Mm. She just got out of the hospital the other day, and I was mm. like, um, she had like some sort of infection, and like, yeah, that was like, I did have a thought that I wouldn't have thought before my dad passing of like, oh, what if I lose her too? Mm -hmm. So it was like a different like type of like reaction to like, mm -hmm. you know, someone being sick or or my mom being sick or whatever. I was like, oh shit, like how would, you know, my little sister who's, that's her real dad, you know. Um, that's always like, that's like a, this is like weird, her real dad. Uh, <laughs> he was my, he was my real dad, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. But, uh, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate having to, like, explain it uh, sometimes. But, yeah, I thought about my little sister. I think about her so much, mm -hmm. you know. How old oh, is she? She's uh, going to be 18 next week mm. or in a couple weeks, in a couple weeks. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think about my mom m mostly because of uh, my little sister, I think, you know. What about you? Yeah, I, I think so. Um my mom and I have a stepdad that I'm very close with, um, who I met the night my dad died. A lot happened on the a like, lot happened. It was a jam packed evening. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I also <laughs> went to a Christ. movie. Can't remember which you one. Went to <laughs> <laughs> I did. I had a full night. Um, You're like, well, I actually have to get going. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Dude, that's... A movie to see. Yeah. So, um, so I think about him and my mm -hmm. mom and I'm like I really don't want to do this again personally so I think I have a little like I mean I think existential dread is just like you know I don't know it's a yeah. fun little part of my life I think a fun <laughs> little part of everybody's life regardless of how much you've experienced it mm -hmm. but I think yeah I have a more dread of like I already had to do that once I don't really want to have to do it again and now I have to do it at least two more times I'm like that just seems really exhausting yeah my you know my my real dad's alive mm -hmm. you know and uh I've had such a tough relationship with him. I'm like, some. I think about that a lot now. I'm like, oh, what am I gonna do? Like, how am I gonna react? Like, how am I gonna feel? Uh, I haven't talked to him in a long time, and sometimes I'm like, oh, what if he like dies tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I didn't talk to him, you know? And then I'm like, I'm I'm real. That's like something I'm really like trying to deal with. I'm like. Well, it also shouldn't be my responsibility anymore. Like, I've done right. everything that I could do. Um, and I'm, like, like I can be the bigger person, but, like, I'm also sensitive and, like, I hurt. And I don't mm -hmm. want to, like, have to, like, band-aid this pain over and over again. And I know that it, it won't, like, this next time won't just be perfect, mm -hmm. you know, or even close to it unless, like, he makes the effort, you know. And... So I think about that a lot. I'm like, yeah, but I also don't want to have not talked to him in forever. Right. That's a but, rough thing. But it's like giving somebody my power that has had, like, so much of my power, so much of my life, even though they were absent. Like, he doesn't realize, like, how much power I've given him, you know. Yeah. And it's like, I, like, don't want to do that again. But, I mean, I like, I care for him, you know, in some way. Like, of course. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a rough, like, my therapist would call it a hula hoop. Like, you can only fit so many things in here. And it's like, oh, like, I want to reach out, but is that going to cost me a lot of energy and shit? You yeah. know, like, that's rough. Do you have a white therapist? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how could you tell? Yeah, yeah. They're like, no, really, how yeah. could you tell? They're like, this is a disc golf of a situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be uh, so mad if I was talking about this and my therapist is like, well, you're in a, you're in a jump rope of a situation. <laughs> I, don't know, I was Watch jump roping white. I, don't know. I feel like. <laughs> I was trying to think of like another know, white probably. thing. Wait, have you, have you, you've been to therapy? Yeah. And he was white. Oh, okay. Cause I was going to say like, what would like a different. So I, I. What makes that white? Is it just like silly? <laughs> hula hooping. Goofy. <laughs> Do you hooping. see black or brown people <laughs> yeah. hula hoop? Hula hooping feels pretty white. I feel like there's not even a question mark there. You never see Hector or Jamal hula hooping. <laughs> it's always like Brad or Becky. I mean, yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. I feel like if I had a hula hooping therapist named Jamal, my life would be like all yeah. problems solved. Like, yeah, yeah. he would know what was up. Yeah. He'd know what was up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, damn. That just like, that was wonderful for me. Because I was like, wow, that was like magic. You guessed that. And you were yeah. like, it really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like just pretty yeah. much 
written out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had a I had yeah. a white therapist that was like, all right, there's a box in the corner of the room. Oh, let's go. And I was like, uh-huh. And they were like, I want you to put all your feelings in this box. And I was like, great. And then I walked out and never went back. Oh, yeah. see, I love an image. Really? Oh, I love it. I don't mind it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm not a fan. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> putting things in a hula hoop. I'm not putting things in an imaginary <laughs> box. <laughs> Sandbox, but yeah, nothing. Yeah. It's just. Mm. I've had the same therapist since I was 11. Really? Wow. Yeah, I went to him, only one I ever went to, and then stopped seeing him for a while, and then got a therapist again while I was here. And uh, she was awesome, and then I quit my job, so I lost her because of the insurance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, try to reconnect with her, and then she never answered my emails. And I was like, <gasps> well, that doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. I think it. I think because it's not through uh, my work anymore. Mm. I don't know. I'm trying to be like, I, I was it's fine. Something, it's something, yeah. Yeah, it was it's nothing definitely I said. not you. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I feel yeah. like I know a lot of people that have been ghosted yeah. by yeah. therapists. But I've never had a therapist post uh, dad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you? Have yeah. you thought about it? Totally. I, I reached yeah. out to my first therapist about it, um, and uh, yeah, he just like got me in contact with people in Chicago that he knew. Yeah. But and then I didn't reach out again, and then too expensive mm-hmm. and all that. Sure. I mean, I can make it work. I just haven't done the steps that I should. Yeah. 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 I'm also being in therapy for so long, so consistently, I'm like, I don't really need it. I know how it works. Yeah. I Which feel like you're like about a psych true. degree. What? I'm like, I have a psych degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I can do this myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You I probably have... need the most help. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, really, because, like, it's, like, the smartest yeah. people, like, lose it. You yeah. Know? Like, they... Well, I think yeah. that's what is genuinely challenging about being so aware of, like, the psychological aspect of what a, I've, a lot of what I've gone through is that I'm, like... I know why that's happening, so I feel like I should be able to correct it. It's a problem. But I can't. It, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But I think with – I've gone in and out of therapy. I was in a little bit in college, a little bit as an adult, and I've had this repeated problem. And I know therapy, like, you have to try a lot of people and, like, you know, see who works for you. But I feel like the second I walk in with the whole dead dad thing, it's like – dollar signs you know mm. like then they're just one well, i have to tell the whole dang story and we have to go through all the characters and all you know it's <laughs> like i don't have the time or energy for this i wish i could just like write it all down yeah. and just like send it to 900 therapists and be like one of you <laughs> fix <Figure> this. Out. <laughs> i do a lot of asking them mm. like the first like few sessions like i'll spend 45 minutes asking you like yeah it feels like i'm interrogating you like maybe that's what i should yeah do. it's like aggressive i think yeah But I feel like that makes sense because for me, too, I do have, you know, obviously a lot of issues and trauma and baggage and yada yada from my dad, but also a lot of other parts of my life Mm -hmm. or like my upbringing. And so I'm like, let's not always circle this back to the whole dead dad thing, like maybe think outside the box. So I feel like it's just been sort of like a push and pull of finding somebody who like can do both, like who Mm -hmm. can like fix my dead dad issues, but also like think outside the box a little or like look at things that might be like other aspects. Definitely. I'm curious. You said, I know Mm -hmm. how to fix it and, but I can't, what is, what do you mean by that? What is fixing it? I mean, I don't know if fix is necessarily the right word. I think there's like, you're kind of always going to be dealing with it or like in and out, but there are like certain reactions that I have to things or um, like I have a, a pretty repetitive pattern of, uh, ab- abandonment issues, mm-hmm. which I think is super normal. Mm-hmm. Um, when my dad died, we weren't speaking, which was not common mm-hmm. for us. I kind of, some of what you were saying earlier, I, I took a step back, even at 15 being like, you know, he had had a few DUIs and he was relapsing. And I was like, I can't do this right now. I can't handle this. I can't process it. So I'm going to take a step back. And then he died. Mm-hmm. So I have a really hard time setting boundaries anymore because I'm like, well, what if I do that and then something happens? Like, what if I say, you know, I don't want to, I don't want you to be in my life right now because it's not healthy. And then, and that I think manifests in like large ways, but also small ways. If I just kind of let people treat me the way that they are going to treat me in a fear of, of them leaving or me sticking up for myself and then something bad happening and that being what the last interaction we had, like that mm-hmm. sort of thing. And I can see myself allowing that to happen, but I can't correct the behavior, if that Uh, makes sense. Yeah. Have you ever had somebody 
give you insight or advice on how to correct the behavior? I mean, I think that's something I've realized more so recently. Um, so it's not been something, like I said, it's like I know to go back to therapy, but I'm mm-hmm. like, that's eh, a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think it's really been something that I've been able to like deep dive. And again, I do feel like I know this is happening. So why don't I just like stop letting it happen? You know? Yeah. Yeah. But humans are complicated, man. They are complicated. Yeah. So I want to um, ask this, like what is, and I feel like you've mentioned it a little bit, but what is your uh, a favorite story about your dad and or, and or a way that you're like him that makes you smile? I can go first. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll mull it over. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really great for me because my dad, you know, was abusive. And when people hear that, they're like, oh, he was a crap person. Mm-hmm. But my mom did such a great job of being honest with me about the abuse, but also being like, um, he was a great dancer. Mm-hmm. And you have his smile and his humor um and he one time won a disco competition on a light up dance floor and i was like (laughs) we are gonna party in whatever form of heaven is after this life because he sounds pretty dope props to your mom oh my god moms are amazing she was 23 when it Mm -hmm. happened and then crazy like in her late 20s when she has a little baby being like what is abuse and she's like all right we're just going to be honest yeah that's a that's a very i feel like that's a tough subject to breach to anyone at any age much less like your children i think same with my mom like having to my mom has always spoken very highly of my dad and has been very clear that alcoholism is a disease exactly and that was not him and that's not who he was Mm -hmm. it's just the disease that he had yes but like you know obviously throughout her life there was a ton of shit that she had to deal with that he did or that we had to deal with and and processing all of that herself and walking three kids through it queen we love her we love jan yes jan oh that's wonderful but yeah um i mean i would say like I don't know, me and my dad, we just had such a special relationship. I look just like him. Mm. Um, I don't look anything like my mom's side of the family, which I think makes her upset, but I, <laughs> I'm a barnet through and through. I look just like my dad. Um, so that's that's nice. But I just think, like, you know, through the ups and downs, like, I spent probably the most time there out of my siblings, and I would go there every weekend. We would always go to the arcade. And... Didn't have a lot of money, but he'd always just give me, like, 20 bucks, and we would just play arcade games, and then we'd take all the tickets, and we'd bring them home, and we'd do that, like, every weekend for, like, however many weekends it took until I could buy, like, whatever stupid stuffed animal that I didn't need out of, yeah. like, 900, <laughs> um, and that was just kind of, like, our special thing. We also spent Halloweens together for most of my life. That My mom also just hates Halloween, so she was like, yeah, that can be your dad's holiday, but... Um, Like, that was one of our things. We would go trick-or-treating together. So it's, like, just those little things. And I feel like now, like, whenever I'm, like, at an arcade Mm -hmm. or, like, you know, dressing up for Halloween, it's, like, a little nod. And it just feels like just Mm -hmm. something special that we shared that I think, like, too, was, like, our thing outside of, like, his relationship. Like, you know, he was into music, um, and I wasn't really, like, that wasn't something I ever did. So like, that was kind of his thing with my brothers that we had like our little things, you know, and Mm. that's always nice to think about. So I love that. Yeah. That's dope. How about you, Gabriel? (coughs) Um, I'm getting, I feel emotional. So I'm like trying to take my time. Definitely. It's real. It's really weird to like do this <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. in this like setting, you know. Um, you don't, and you don't have to answer. You know? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh, you know, my dad was uh, was uh, a musician and, and and an artist, and um, I feel like he was like the real like definition of like what it means to be an artist, it, like just to make stuff you know Mm -hmm. like sometimes like when I do when I do like this like um, stand up 
I, it, it feels like a little pretentious to be like, like as a stand-up comic, to be like I'm an artist, you know. But but it, but it is. It's just somebody that's making something. But sometimes I feel like I'm not doing it because I'm an artist. I'm doing it, or I'm I'm not doing it for the sake of like making something in this like format. I'm doing it because I want to be like famous, or like I want the attention. I want mm-hmm. everything else, you know more than I want to just like actually like make this thing sometimes you know and uh um um my dad just made stuff you know because like that was like inside of him uh and uh Um, we just we made things together you know Um, when I when I was a kid I was like I was probably like in the fourth or fifth grade Um, I was at home and him and my mom went to like the grocery store uh my mom taught him how to barbecue <laughs> and uh and he got really good at it and he would barbecue any any time he could you know I'm from California so the weather's like always oh, great to barbecue you know and so we'd barbecue a lot like all year round but i remember one time they were going to the store to go get stuff for a barbecue and uh he came back with like a bike and this guy was like cleaning out uh his garage and uh uh his his name was Mark and uh Mark saw this like old Schwinn that was like rusted in this driveway and he stopped and he was like and my mom I'm sure was embarrassed <laughs> because he's like what do you, she was like what are you doing and he's like I'm going to ask him if he'll sell that bike and I, and I just my mom's never told me this but I know that she was like you know he's cleaning out his garage don't do it and he was like why like what's the harm in asking you know and so he asked him and he's like you want you want that bike you like you could have that bike so he took the bike and um he turned it into like a lowrider style like um old 50 style like lowrider bike and uh for me he did it for me, and I helped him. Not very much. I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that was that was my first that was my first bike. Mm. You know, my my real dad bought me a couple bikes when I was like a kid and, and, and stuff like that. But you know, Mark made me. You know, with his yeah. hands, and, and he did a lot of stuff like that. You know, and. Uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm, I just, like, remind myself uh, to continue to make things for myself and not for anyone else, mm-hmm. uh, because that's what, you know, that's what he did. That is beautiful. Yeah. I love that. That's dope. Well, thank you both for sharing. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh this was it means a lot to me and uh it's really tough but i'm glad we have other people i've never had a long conversation about <clears throat> my dad being dead it's always like a one off right um so this was really nice i'm grateful for your stories and your sharing yeah, um absolutely and if you can if you're listening to this and you want to go hug your dad yeah. go make go stuff for your yourself dad. go hug your dad oh yeah and your mom and your mom oh my god Hug her tight. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hug your parents. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Of course. Thank you.